Hi guys, it's Frankie from Frankie Tech. Good to see you guys again, and I'm here with my full review of the Asus ROG Phone 3. Now I've been using this phone for about almost a week, coming up to five days, and I have a lot of thoughts about this phone. Let's go down the laundry list, design, display, performance, quick audio test, share some camera samples, we'll wrap up with some PUBG. And now guys, this is the 10 cent version of the phone, so the China ROM version, it is the 12 gigs of RAM, 128 gigs of storage. Let's go ahead and put on X mode here from the Armory Crate, so I can show you guys the most blazing fast example of this phone. And coming in at a price of around 4,300 RMB for this variant, or around 615 US dollars, there's a great case to be made for this China version of the phone. Is it worth picking this version up when the global version is costing close to a thousand or even more than a thousand euros is this the best gaming phone that you can pick up in 2020 is this the true game master let's have a look but first I do want to show what is inside the box for this China ROM variant of the Asus ROG Phone 3. There you see it, 865 plus, 12 gigs of RAM, 128 gigs of storage, lifting the lid. And there you see, for those who dare, awesome. And this is where you would find this case. It's a pretty flimsy plastic case, but it's better than nothing. And here you see the user manual and these awesome stickers. Look at these Republic of Gamer, Join the Republic stickers, pretty neat. Pretty nifty SIM ejector tool. We have our USB-C to USB-C charging cable. Very nice cable. We have a USB-C to 3.5 millimeter headphone jack for this phone and the charging brick. 30 watt. Nothing else in the box. Pretty standard unboxing here for the China variant of the phone. Design, 9.9 millimeters thick, 240 grams. So it is definitely one of the heaviest phones I have used this year. And now some of you may like it, some of you may not, but I actually do like that Asus has gone for a more traditional look here on this phone. So you have a Gorilla Glass 6 back panel here with this beautiful light up ROG logo and you have your aerodynamic system. There is a vent here on this phone, so it does not have waterproofing. You'll wanna make sure that you don't dunk this phone in water. Very nice metallic edges. Look, you see antenna bands there. So it's a nice metallic feel. And here you see the SIM tray. And with a little bit of effort, you should be able to pull out this little rubber gasket. And what you will see here are two ports, an additional USB-C port, which will allow you to actually charge this phone while you're playing in a horizontal manner. And we have an additional proprietary ACES port for a lot of the accessories, including that additional fan unit that will actually plug in right here and will allow the phone to manage 3.1 gigahertz of a CPU speed for sustained periods of time. And at the bottom, USB-C, but it's off to the side, so also meant for gaming. And here you see the triggers for the Asus ROG Phone 3, power button, volume rocker, and here's the other capacitive trigger button. Nothing on the top except for that mic hole. And on the bottom, yes, this phone does have quite large bezels, but at least they are symmetrical. And they do house these dual speakers, which you'll hear in a minute, are some of the best that I've heard on a phone this year. So overall design, it's not for everyone, but I do think that Asus has made moves into making this phone feel a lot more appealing to the regular user. Yes, the kind of horizontal camera bump is not for everyone, but I don't mind it. It looks kind of cool with this phone. It's not my favorite design of a phone this year, but it definitely gives you that gaming inspired theme, and I think it works really well for this phone. Display, 6.59 inch AMOLED, 19.5 by nine, full HD display here, HDR10 plus capable, but what is the star of the show of this display? It is none other than that 144 hertz refresh rate. So here you see it, 60 hertz, 90, 120, and 144, and I have not seen any other manufacturer offer this many options in terms of refresh rate. So if you wanted to go down to get a bit more battery life to 120, or to 90, or to 60, there you go, and it's 6,000 milliamp per battery, battery will last you forever. I'm going to keep it at 144 hertz for now, but I just love seeing this flexibility in terms of which refresh rate you can use on this phone. And overall, it's a very nice panel. It reminds me quite a bit of the one from the previous generation. The viewing angles could be better. I do see a little bit of rainbowing happening at kind of off access here. But what is the biggest letdown about this panel? Because it is not the best panel I've used. And that's going to be the crushing of shadows or the grainy blacks when you go to low brightness settings. So if I go very low brightness, you might be able to tell here and it's hard to show on camera it's a lot more apparent in low lighting but you'll just see this kind of graininess to the display it's indicative of a lower quality AMOLED panel this phone also doesn't get as dim as a lot of the other phones I've used like the OnePlus 8 Pro or the Mi 10 Pro and so while in regular brightness I think the display does a solid job and the refresh rate is one of the highest on any phone it's not my favorite display panel and I would say it's probably my biggest negative against this phone and there's a clear example where they have had to cut corners to 
to be able to get all the other specs on this phone but I really wish they had not cut corners on the display quality because it just is not a pleasing display in lower light settings. And here's YouTube playback on the Asus ROG Phone 3 and one of the best experiences about enjoying content on this phone has got to be the front firing speakers. They just make everything so much more immersive and you see the quality doesn't look too bad but you will notice that crushing of shadows if you're watching anything kind of more dark or content in low light. But in bright lighting like this I think this phone does a solid job and will be a great content consumption device for your needs. And in DRM info, another pleasure to see here, L1 baby, on this China version of the Asus ROG Phone 3. That means you'll have HD Netflix out of the box on both the global and the China variants. So this is practically a non-issue if you're looking to save quite a bit of money and pick up this China version performance and we're talking here for the first time on Frankie Tech about the Snapdragon 865 Plus. So this is the overclocked version of the 865 and here you see the Geekbench scores. So one of the highest single core scores we are seeing now from a Qualcomm Snapdragon chipset and an N22 with one of the highest scores I've ever seen on a phone, 621,000. This 865 Plus is just a beast. And can't forget to mention that this phone houses 12 gigs of DDR5 RAM, one of the first phones on the market to offer that, up to 16 gigs is also possible on the higher variant and 128 gigs of UFS 3.1 storage. We have seen from my recent speed test, it's not going to give you some blazing next level performance compared to the 865. But if you're looking for the latest specs and the latest chipset on a phone that it can achieve these types of scores, you have it here in the Asus ROG Phone 3. And talking about the software experience on this Asus ROG Phone 3, it is using Android 10. And as you can see, I've now set this up to a very stock-like theme. Now there are gaming themes on this phone and you can have a look at that interface in some of my previous videos. But for me, I've decided to go with this very clean stock look. Now, as you can see, it is the China variant, which means if you are in China, you'll sign in with this T-Space account. But once you set it to this theme, it has a much nicer stock look to it. And this phone should be getting Android version 11 later this year. And in terms of performance, what can I say? Speed Demon, guys. One of the fastest phones I've ever tested here on the channel. And while it's very hard to tell, you do notice a very slight difference between 144 hertz to the 120 hertz on the OnePlus 8 Pro. But I think what helps this phone feel even faster is the 270 hertz touch sampling or the touch response rate, which makes everything you click on just super responsive. Apps open up instantaneously. It is one of the fastest experiences on any phone that I've had this year. And talking about batteries, we have a 6,000 milliampere battery capacity on this Asus ROG Phone 3. And this has calculated screen on time of around five hours, but personally I've been getting closer to six hours of screen on time using 144 hertz on this phone. It is lasting me easily a day or a day and a half of use. And guys, I'm using it on my 5G data connection here in Hong Kong. Now with lower refresh rates, you'll probably get even more epic battery life, but I honestly just have enjoyed being able to use a phone for a full day at 144 hertz. And with a 30 watt fast charger, this phone should top up pretty quickly. Stay tuned for my full battery charge test on this phone. But what's the big omission here? No wireless charging. And I think Asus is probably gonna have to do something about that in the next generation. Wireless charging is becoming almost standard with phones of this price point. And I do think they will feel more pressure to include it in the next generation of this phone. And now quick audio speaker test, X stereo speakers, two dedicated amplifiers on this phone. Let me bring the mic down, let's have a listen. What can I say? I want to just keep listening to music on this phone all day. And these might be my new favorite speakers on any phone that I've tested ever on the channel. And that's putting this Asus ROG Phone 3 up there with the Mate 20X and the Mi 10 Pro as my favorite three speakers that I've ever tested with a gorgeous lush sound, thumping bass, and just a total immersive experience. I think the speakers on this phone rival even some of the dedicated smart speakers that I have in my home like the Echo Dot, the Nest Mini, and many of the dedicated mini Bluetooth speakers that I've used. If you're crazy about having the best speakers on a phone this year, look no further than this Asus ROG Phone 3.
And now talking about the fingerprint scanner and vibration motor. So the fingerprint scanner is solid and you can tell here it's actually one of the newer generations because it's a larger area to tap into which is indicative of the more modern fingerprint scanners. And now when it comes to the vibration motor, it's good. It's not my favorite vibration motor. It doesn't have that kind of really nice smooth feel that you see from phones like the OnePlus 8 Pro or the Pixel phones or the iPhone 11 Pro Max, but I still think it's decent and the capacitive keys also give a pretty good vibration when you're playing games. And so the haptic experience on this phone is premium, but it's just not up there with the best that I've used. And talking about cameras, we have the Sony IMX 686 on board, and it has actually taken quite pleasing shots for me in the past couple days. Super fast shutter, as you can see here. There we go. We also have a 13 megapixel ultra wide camera and a five megapixel macro lens, which to be honest, I barely use. On the front, we have a 24 megapixel F 2.0 front camera, and it does a pretty good job as well. And this phone is capable of shooting up to 8K 30 FPS, and it can also shoot 4K at 60 FPS. And here you see the faux plan results look pretty good. Great detail. And let's face it, you're not getting this phone for the camera, but if it even produces decent or even good results, that should make everyone pretty happy. But have a look at these results and let me know in the comments, what do you think? This is 4K video on the Asus ROG Phone 3. Pretty rainy day here in Hong Kong. And now let's have a look at 8K. Same shot here in 8K on the Asus ROG Phone 3. Pretty incredible. And this is front facing video on the Asus ROG Phone 3. Shooting unfortunately only in full HD, which considering the rear camera can do 8K, is a bit of a letdown. But hit me up in the comments, what do you think? And here we go with some quick PUBG action. Go and check out my other videos where I've done Call of Duty Mobile, PUBG, and even Garena Free Fire with this phone. But showing you guys once again HDR, extreme settings, realistic, enabled anti-aliasing and shadows, and disabled auto adjust graphics. There we go, and let's get started. And it's time, it's time for the classic Frankie Tech Swim Test. Just keep swimming, just keep swimming. Woo! Birthday Swim Test, oh yeah. And at the plane jump, the Adreno 650. And I'm playing guys, by the way, on 5G network right now. And you can see here, 60 FPS, 38 degrees Celsius, all of these different features which will allow for an even better gaming experience. Let's get down to the surface, get some guns, get some action. All right, we got some guns, here we go. I see someone there. Take that. Booyah, first kill on the Asus RG Phone 3. Let's get another kill here. Take that. There we go, two kills, baby. You got a few shots in though, and it's getting pretty warm in my room, man. 28 degrees Celsius. Let's see how this phone is doing. 40 degrees Celsius, 60 FPS, holding strong, and the metal edge is getting a little bit warm in the hand. And in a game like this, the thing that you notice the most is just the immersiveness of the audio experience. It is just incredible. But now let's go ahead and try out these triggers, and you can see they are set up for shooting. And I've shown this before, but how you set those up is just by going to the Game Genie, and there's even deeper kind of access and you can even add macros to automate input sequences for your games and I'm also gonna do this guys record and we're gonna get a recording started here as you see they're recording now the gameplay and after I get one more kill I will show you the recording quality and you can see the settings it continues to record and there you see resolution you can record up to 1080p on this device gonna go find my teammate I think he's driving as well 
Okay, I'm gonna exit and get to shooting this guy. Take that. Three kills on the Asus ROG Phone 3. And that's where we wrap up this gameplay today, guys. Let's see where this phone ended up. 44 degrees Celsius. It is getting hot now, and we're approaching almost 30 degrees. And so you can see when we finally did recording and we played in a very warm room, we got this phone pretty hot. Now, I think any phone will overheat in these conditions. But if that concerns you guys, I do recommend you pick up that additional fan unit here, which will allow you to keep that sustained 3.1 gigahertz CPU performance according to Asus indefinitely. But hands down guys, that is what this phone excels at, is just giving you an incredible gaming performance and from the immersive audio experience to this very nice panel when playing in bright settings does a solid job to just some monstrous specs on this phone. I don't think you're going to get a better PUBG experience on any phone this year than on this Asus ROG Phone 3. And last but not least guys, sharing the recording that I took earlier of gameplay, shooting full HD here, looks really solid, and you should have good quality 1080p recording of all of your games here on this phone. So that's it for this video and my final verdict on this Asus ROG Phone 3. This phone is incredible. It truly is the game master. And if you want the ultimate gaming experience in a phone in 2020, I think you have it here in this phone. From the more modernized glass back, but still keeping the ethos, the spirit of what Republic of Gamers is all about, to just incredible performance with the Snapdragon 865 Plus, the most cutting edge experience on any phone. Incredible dual front facing speaker the best I've heard on any phone and a camera that punches well above its category. Those are the pros guys but what is the con that I have with this phone? It is the display quality and once you've used phones like the OnePlus 8 Pro or the S20 Ultra you will notice the difference. This display isn't terrible but it's also not great and I haven't seen those grainy blacks in low light since maybe the Pixel 2 and if you're a display nerd even the 144 Hertz isn't going to satisfy you. This display is just not to the level of the other flagship phones that cost around the same amount for the global version. But there's the point guys, if you can pick up this China variant of the phone, then those display concerns kind of go away. If I was paying 1,100 euros for this phone, I would have major issues with the display and the grainy blacks at low brightness settings. But I didn't pay 1,100 euros for this phone, I paid closer to 5 to 600 euros for this phone, so nearly half that amount. And it's incredible to see the price separation between these China versions versions of the phone and to most of you out there who want to have the same or very similar Asus ROG Phone 3 experience for close to half the cost then you'll want to consider this China variant of the phone and once you do some tweaking like I have you'll have a very enjoyable stock like Android experience. Yes you're going to have a little bit of that China bloat here and there but I still think it offers an incredible value and at the price that I paid is the best gaming experience on any phone this year. But hit me up in the comments. What do you think of this Asus ROG Phone 3 and specifically this China variant? Do you think it's a better buy than the global ROM? Or are you dead set on that global version even though it's going to cost quite a bit more and is going to have the same display issues as this China variant? Hit me up in the comments. I'd love to hear about it. And that's it for this video. If you liked it, give me that thumbs up. And if you love the content of Frankie Tech, subscribe to the channel. Hit the bell icon for future updates. And so guys, pretty epic video today. But for now, I'm going to go and edit this quickly and then it's time to celebrate my birthday and to all you guys sending birthday wishes today thanks again so much and if it is your birthday today as well then happy birthday to you and thanks once again for all your support so that's it and this is where i leave you by saying this is frankie tech signing off have a good one